Christine Russell rushes through the streets, running to try to make it on time to school. She woke up late this morning and got an email from her school. It said that she forgot to attend a class all year and that she would have to pass the final that morning if she was going to get a chance to graduate. Already stressed because she woke up late, this only added to her anxieties. When she finally found a class after roaming the halls for about an hour, she nervously sat down, seeing everyone else taking the test. As soon as she gets the test and looks at it, she realizes that the test is in a whole different language. Christine starts to freak out inside her head until she starts to hear laughter slowly growing louder around her. When she looked up, she realized the class was laughing at her. She looked down at herself and saw that she was still wearing her pajamas. Christine started to cry as the laughter got louder and louder. Suddenly, her eyes opened to look up at her ceiling, and as her head popped off her pillow, she realized it was all just a nightmare. Adults all over the world have nightmares about high school. They forgot to study for the test they have that morning, or they're late for school, or even the occasional nightmare of going to school without any clothes on. Why is it that high school causes so much anxiety for both the students and the adults that have long since graduated? How can we make high school a less scary place? Well, we cannot fix the teenager issue, but we can solve the academics aspect. Proverbs 16.16 states, How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The meaning behind this verse is that wisdom is much more useful and profitable in this life and the life to come. Charles Spurgeon speaks on the necessity of wisdom. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. We cannot have wisdom without God, and education needs more wisdom within it. Let's look at how we used to teach our students. Education and schooling have been a big part of America's history, and one of the first schools created in America was founded in 1635. The Boston Latin School is both the first public school and the oldest existing school in the United States. When talking about schooling, most people imagine one-room schoolhouses. These one-room schoolhouses is where teachers would deal with a range of students of various ages and abilities by using the Montessori system. The Montessori system is an education method that became popular on a global scale during the early 19th century. This method was also known as mutual instruction. Before there were schools, knowledge would be passed down through the families or groups of families getting together to learn different skills. As older children and families would teach younger ones, the abler pupils in these schools became the helpers to the teachers and taught the other students what they had learned. In 1837, Horace Mann, who was the Secretary of Education in Massachusetts, came up with a new idea as to how we should organize our schools from his time observing Prussian schools. In 1848, he proposed the idea to place students in, age, in grades by age. They were assigned by age to different grades and progressed through them regardless of differences of aptitude. In addition, he used the lecture method common in European universities, which required students to receive professional instruction rather than teach one another. In 1907, William Wirt created the Gary Plan. The Gary Plan was implemented in the city of Gary, Indiana. It introduced the use of vocational educational programs such as wood shop, machine shop, typing, and secretarial skills. William Wirt tried to create a more life skills focused school curriculum. Wirt divided the students into two groups. One group used the academic classrooms, while the second group was divided among the shops, nature studies, auditorium, gymnasium, and outdoor facilities. Then the groups were changed position. But soon after this plan was proposed came the Great Depression, so the people thought it was too expensive and abandoned it. However, all this progress was cut short in the 1980s because schools started to focus on test scores instead of students' creativity and love for knowledge. In 1990, the United States spent 2% of its budget on education compared to the 30% spent on support for the elderly. School principals were forced to downplay art, drama, music, history, and anything else that was not being scored on standardized tests, lest, they be, lest the school be labeled failing by the quantifiers behind the No Child Left Behind Act. The No Child Left Behind Act, also known as the NCLB, came about in 2002. The NCLB expanded the federal role in public education 
through further emphasis on annual testing, annual academic progress, report cards, and teacher qualifications, as well as significant changes in funding. The states were required to measure progress and punish schools that were not meeting the goals as measured by standardized state exams in math and language skills. Some of the positive things that came about from the NCLD was that the test scores did improve and it provided quality education for minority students. However, the NCLD Act influenced the students, the school system worse than it improved it. Schools were forced to cut back on everything that wasn't being tested on because the funding for the program never came. The NCLB forced the students to focus on doing well on tests rather than learning the knowledge they would need for life after high school. This inevitably led to teachers teaching the students more test-centered information. Randall Bass, who was Vice President for Strategic Education Initiatives and Professor of English at Georgetown University, says that a person who is schooled only to pass the test is ill-prepared to cope with today's rapidly changing world. <clears throat> Our schools today are still trying to catch up to how education was before the No Child Left Behind Act when it comes to creativity and students' love for learning, while also trying to advance and improve alongside the innovations of today. Education has changed and grown through accurate history, and recently we have seen the introduction of practical education becoming more known and used in schools and educational discussions. But what does practical education mean? Claire Mendemica, who has a master's degree from the University of Aberdeen, defines practical education as the means by which individuals develop and enhance their skills, abilities, and knowledge in order to solve practical problems in their personal and professional lives. The definition of practical means likely to succeed or be effective in real circumstances, suitable for a particular purpose, or sensible and realistic in the approach to a situation or problem. The definition of education is the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction, especially at a school or university. It is information about or training in a particular field or knowledge. It is in or a body of knowledge acquired while being educated. Educate is derived from the Latin words educare and educer. Educare, which means to train or to mold, and educer meaning to lead out, leading out of the pupil what is already within him or her, to lead the pupil out of ignorance. One side uses education to mean the preservation and passing down of knowledge and the shaping of youths in the image of their parents. The other side sees education as preparing a new generation for the changes that are to come readying them to create solutions to problems yet unknown. One calls for rote memorization and becoming good workers. The other requires questioning, thinking, and creating. Public education is currently ignoring teaching practical life skills, which detrimentally affects students post-graduation. Education, which teaches practical life skills, would include instruction on how to manage the everyday skills needed in life, and how to apply these skills successfully. Life skills have been researched and discussed throughout many educational circles. During the later decades of the 20th century and into the 21st century, society has undergone an accelerating pace of change in economy and technology. Its effects on the workplace and thus on the demands of, on educational system preparing students for the workforce have been significant in several ways. The current workforce is significantly more likely to change career fields or jobs. Young adults are more likely to change jobs every 4.4 years on average, more than any other generation. With this employment mobility comes a demand for different skills, ones that enable people to be flexible and adaptable in different roles and in different career fields. The purpose of these skills is to prepare the students for life after high school. Whether that's in college, a trade school, or a job, they will know that they are prepared for anything life throws at them with these life skills. These life skills being logical skills, like logical thinking, personal finance, civics or government classes, and writing skills pertaining to a job. Learning and innovation skills are needed as well, like critical thinking and problem solving, communications and collaboration, creativity and information literacy. Career and life skills like flexibility and adaptability, initiative and social interaction, productivity and accountability are crucial for the student's life after high school. 
as are all skills that need to be taught in high school today. 84% of people said they learned things in schools they've never utilized after they graduated. When asked if they'd rather take a tax preparation course or a traditional calculus class, only 13% said they'd rather take the calculus class. Between household repairs and algebra, just 17% chose algebra. It's clear from the results that a lot of Americans aren't as confident as they'd like to be when it comes to many day-to-day -day life skills, including how to file their own taxes. This is Heather Watts, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Digital at H. Northlock. Proverbs 1 through 5 states, Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the, ones, and the one who understands obtain guidance. This verse demonstrates that the basic virtue of the wise is the desire to learn. These life skills combine both hard and soft skills into the perfect balance of knowledge to help our students grow into successful adults. Hard skills refer to the job-related knowledge and abilities that employees need to perform their job duties effectively. Soft skills, on the other hand, are the personal qualities that help employees really thrive in the workplace. These skills can have many applications, but you must know how to use them successfully if you are to remember them later on in life. Logical thinking can help when emotions are running high or help solve conflicts. Personal finance skills are always needed, especially in adult life. It is important to learn this early on so you can make less mistakes later on in life. Government classes can help students have a stronger grasp on how our government works, which can also help when it comes to voting and being a part of the community. Certain writing skills can help you, can help you use to explain and teach students how to write a job application, or they can even write examples in class for experience. Some will also have to write professional emails every day for their job and should be prepared for that. Students will have to learn how to think on their feet and come up with new ideas and concepts, especially in a world as changing as this one, which is crucial for innovation. Critical thinking is essential in emergency or urgent situations, and teaching our students to think soundly while they are stressed and overwhelmed is incredibly important. Problem-solving skills can be used in life to help assess any problems with your work, finances, or relationships and then think logically about how to fix them or come to a compromise. Communication skills are necessary in relationships to be able to collaborate and get along with friends, coworkers, partners, and even just strangers. You also need communication skills for public speaking, which is essential in life. Creativity might not be thought of as important to some, but creativity sparks interest and innovation. Creativity is at the center of all that we do. Information literacy is not often seen in our world, but is needed with how anyone can put anything on the internet, and anyone can see it and believe it without ever fact-checking it. It teaches the students to always fact-check what they are reading, and to question the world and its motives at every turn. Flexibility and adaptability are very similar in that they teach the student to change with their environment, because nothing stays the same for long, not even people, who were meant to change and to grow. Initiative teaches the students to take charge of a project or their career and helps them grow confidence in their abilities and strengths. Social interaction can be hard for some people, but is necessary for everyone in life, no matter what the student chooses to do after high school. Social interaction can be the difference between whether you get the job or not and how you interact with strangers, friends, and coworkers alike all depend on the student's ability to interact socially with them. Productivity can be difficult to learn for both students and adults, and influences your life greatly, whether you can be productive in your work and school or not. Accountability is hard to find in society, and we must be examples for others around us and admit fault when it happens. Many people believe that the students' parents should teach their children these life school skills instead of the school system. Children trust their parents more than they trust their teachers, they spend more time with their parents and not their teachers. Parents should help their children thrive in life. Parents have more authority over their children, and that parents' <coughs> practical skills are more applicable to their children. The Center for Parenting Education speaks on this. One of the most important jobs parents have is preparing their children for the day when they will leave the home and enter the real world. One of the best ways parents prepare their children for adulthood 
is by acting as their teacher and role model to help them learn the many skills they will need. There are some people who believe that parents should teach their children, one of these people being John Edelson. John Edelson founded Time for Learning, which is an online homeschool curriculum for parents who want to help teach their children either just life skills or begin the journey of homeschooling, because he saw a problem in education and fixed it. John Edelson has given parents a great opportunity to teach their children all of the needed life skills to thrive in life. Parents have the opportunity to teach their children the necessary life skills. However, some parents do teach their children practical life skills, however, not all of them do. And those that do are not teaching all of the necessary skills needed. Some children have bad relationships with their parents, and their parents don't always know what their children need. Most parents weren't even taught any practical skills of life and had to learn along the way and make many mistakes. So they assume their child, child will do the same. Most parents are still learning practical skills along with their children. Three million students have a parent missing in the household. Some parents don't teach their children these life skills, either because they don't know these life skills or they don't know how to teach their children these life skills. Teaching their children can be overwhelming because of many reasons. It's so much information to teach a teenager, they don't know the information, or they don't know where to start when teaching the information. Most commonly, however, parents are too tired after work to try and teach their children these life skills. Many people put these life skills on the parents to teach their kids, but not all parents are qualified to teach these lessons, and many assume that school is enough learning. According to the Program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies, also known as the PIAAC, one in six American adults lack basic life skills. The school system would be a perfect place to learn these indispensable skills. Students want their parents and teachers to intervene and teach them the things they need to know for life after high school, but parents don't feel prepared to teach their, their children. This is why we need teachers with prepared curriculums and lessons to teach the students. <coughs> Parents don't know how to teach their children these topics or even where to start, and are not qualified to teach their children. But teachers have a curriculum to follow, and know how to teach the students the knowledge they need for life after high school. 63% of students surveyed say their parents are responsible for educating them about money management. Meanwhile, the network's financial institute reported that only 26% of parents feel prepared to educate their children. Tom Davidson, CEO of EverFi, which is custom education for K-12, spoke on how students don't have any experience with personal finance and yet they are only a couple of years away from being adults. Many high school students have little, if any, personal experience in managing their own finances, yet they are just moments away from entering adulthood, opening lines of credit and making financial decisions that will impact their individual futures in our entire global economy. This, this cyclical nature of sending students into the real world without sufficient financial education is leaving the next generation unprepared for the challenges they'll face as adults. Along with leaving our economy in the hands of people who don't know what to do with it. In addition, 83% of students believe that personal finance to be mandatory in schools. However, only eight states have a mandatory personal finance course. Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, Iowa, North Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, and Virginia. That's 12,717 schools out of 115,576. That's only 11% of schools in America. Students can be taught how to file taxes and other personal finance courses, and it is relatively easy but most parents don't have the skills or the knowledge on the topics students need. Many adults today weren't taught how to do their taxes in schools. When asked about personal finance questions related to federal income tax returns, the average U.S. adult scored about 50%, according to a survey from their wallet. Across the nation would be receiving Fs. According to the survey of 2,000 American adults commissioned by H&R Block, nearly 6 in 10 adults Feel a course on money management and budgeting in high school would have been helpful for them. Another 44% would have liked a class explaining how to file taxes. This doesn't apply only to personal finance classes. Students and parents don't know many life skills that are essential to life after high school. We should be teaching our students the life skills they will need in life after high school. 
These skills are necessary to learn because they help make working and learning easier in life. They also help young adults grow into mature and smart adults. Public schools need to stop ignoring its students and help them improve and prepare for life after high school. Public education needs to take on a more practical outlook on its classes so that way we are setting students up for success, not for failure. Institutional education does not teach its students the life skills that are necessary in adult life. Parents do not teach their children life skills adequately enough. They are not providing them with the skills they need in life. Practical education provides students with the life skills they need to both survive and thrive in life after high school. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned, uh, you, at one point you talked about questioning, thinking, and creating as three of the key things to focus on in education. I'm really curious to hear, uh, as I've been chewing on this over the years too, um, what are some practical things that you would suggest based on the things you read about and thought about um, in the area of creativity? What would creativity look like practically in high school? If it was something that we said, let's do a better job here. So I, let me first say, I'm with you, sister. The, the test scores issue of driving education can be a real problem. And so I, I'm interested in more creativity ideas. So what would you suggest? I would suggest that creativity be shown more in having a love for learning about the students. Um, because many, many students um, don't have a love for learning and just have this hate for school. And creativity could help bring back that love and adoration towards learning yep. and could help honestly could probably increase test scores as well if they understand and want to know the information that they're learning. Right. Good. So question regarding that follow-up. We've had this conversation at the school. How do we help students love learning more by using creativity? What does that look like? I definitely think that there could be I definitely think that there could be um, more use of different learning types in schools instead of just having the teacher talk to the students and hope that they understand it. Because there are many ways that students learn instead of just hearing. Um, so I definitely think that would be a very big way that could help it. Thank you. Well done, Tori. So if students are taught skills like logical thinking, critical thinking, problem solving, why not simply trust that they'll develop the necessary hard skills you know, for a given career when they get there? Why not just wait? Could you rephrase that? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. So so hard skills as I understood them, and those are some of the, the necessary skills for a given for a given career and a given field, some of those things. Um, so my understanding is that you're saying those should be part of education, is that right? And so what I'm asking is if we do teach students skills like logical thinking, problem solving, then why not say we don't have to teach them the hard skills because they will be able to figure that out on their own if they go into this field or if they go into that field, why not just wait and let them learn that for themselves? I personally think that critical thinking and all of those logical skills that they are a part of hard skills, so they're already being taught. And I also believe that soft skills are essential for jobs because I've heard from a couple people um, that hire for the city that they hire <laughs> for soft skills and they teach for hard skills. Yeah. All right, thank you. Very well done, Tori. I feel like I need to revise my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard in your class. <laughs> so, um, these skills, I've, I've been in an area where physical skills are very demanding. But I've also, in that area, I found out that if the people could not think, those skills were not as helpful as they, as they thought. So. Um, 
What would you say in our school we might be able to do to help do a better job of preparing you guys for the skills that you feel are lacking? Well, I already think that this school is really great when it comes to teaching a lot of the practical life skills. But like I said earlier, with the creativity, a lot of the teachers here teach in very specific ways, and a lot of the students have different ways of learning. So it could be more helpful if you had better opportunities for the different learning of the students. So maybe we should change some of our methodologies a little bit. Yes, Thank you. Hey, John. So I'm a little confused at one point. You talk about practical skills, which I would call pragmatism. Pragmatism meaning results oriented. Then on the other hand, you're talking about creativity. Pragmatism seems to kill creativity in a lot of cases. How do you involve both of those where I'm just shooting for results, but I'm also keeping truth, beauty, goodness, and creativity alive? Okay. What I think that you're asking, like what I think the question, the answer to your question would be, is that so pragmatism is very results based and can often kill creativity. However, if we involve creativity in the um, order of which we do our practical life skills, it will result in the students having a more of a love for learning and knowledge. Okay. Good question. Good answer. The other question I have, which is really relevant to culture today, is you said a lot of parents are ill-equipped to educate their own kids. And you're saying, well, um, let's, let's turn them over to the state. Let's let the state schools teach them. Um, doesn't that seem to take away some of the autonomy of the parents in terms of their children? Autonomy being rule over their, parent, over their children. I definitely do believe that a lot of parents do already teach some practical life skills and that if they could, it would be better for them to teach the practical life skills. However, most parents don't. And so with no other option from the parents not teaching their students, the schooling, if it had a good curriculum to teach the students the practical life skills would be the better option. Mm -hmm. I just ask you what your source is when you say most don't. I don't remember my source right now, but I did a, a little bit of research on how on how how much parents did teach life skills, and I found out that a lot of the life skills that they were teaching were more forgive my language kindergarten based <laughs> of like being nice to each other and learning when to talk and how most parents don't go any further than that. Okay, good answer. Thank you. I've seen your thesis about practical learning experience in your definition. <laughs> I would say yes, actually. It has been because it helps with creativity and it helps the students um, really like figure out what they want to learn about and enjoy and then delve into that. It certainly was hard though. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way you would make it more practical or more creative either way? Um, How would you improve it? I don't know if this is practical life skills based, but personally I would do less of the more traditional school um, lessons and more focused on senior thesis because I know for a fact that a lot of the seniors struggled with balancing the normal classes homework and the thesis homework. So it could definitely be helpful to do a little bit less of that. Right, thank you. <laughs> so you have uh, touched a nerve here. <laughs> good way, good way. This, this is really good conversation. I think education needs people like you, so I, I endorse you heading into education if that's something you are pursuing. Um, interestingly, <laughs> enough, interestingly enough, the alumni survey that we conducted last summer revealed that that was one of the things alumni mentioned was personal finance as an improvement that they would suggest. 
And we've had a personal finance class at Trinity here for almost a decade, and they don't take it. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not being defensive. <laughs> but what would you say to someone who says, look, with Ramsey and YouTube, that's a waste of a school's time. Why not teach students how to think, how to be virtuous people, and then they can go out and learn those things for themselves? That is a good question. I definitely think that um, when the schools teach about like how to think and how to be virtuous people, they can use personal finance as an example of how to think and how to be virtuous people in their finance and in the other aspects of their life. Yeah. So would you say that... Um, it can be helpful to tell them that, but we still should offer that in schools. We still, or I mean, you, you mentioned also home repair versus algebra. I don't know how to do any. My dad taught me nothing. He, I said, "How do you change a tire?" He said, "Here, here's my AAA car." <laughs> so, but I have fixed so much stuff around my house. I build things all because of YouTube. So why not think that now that YouTube's around, we don't need to teach that in schools. We need to teach people how to be discerning and wise and how to love learn. I feel like there's probably a balance of both on how to be loving and learning and how to do more physical attributes like the personal finance or the home improvement stuff. And although there are YouTube videos and stuff, they might not be as sure. um, <laughs> applicable or as really just useful right. for the student. And they might not even want to learn how to do these things. They they have the ease of just paying someone to do it for them. Whereas if it's a mandatory thing in schooling, they know and can possibly remember how to do this later on in life. Okay. So uh, just for the record, you always ask Mr. Rossberg why how did he know how to do something? And he just says you do with Jesus. So uh, <laughs> that's the way to go. Thank you. Well done. Your your project is complete.